go for the outtakes. <clears throat> right, this is, uh, this is series pretty much number one. Ollie and I have uh, decided just to take some time out and uh, just take the opportunity to debate, run through different things. Chat health. Chat health and, and go from there. I'm interested in what you're doing and how you see some things from yeah. a healthcare perspective in your industry and um, hopefully share some things from a, a chiropractic and a, a functional medicine side of things of where my interest and we just go from there. Yeah, I think a lot of that stuff because of knowing you for so long, obviously you know me and the way our paths, like they cross with the functional yeah. side of things, which yeah. really works in. And also our paths getting here are very different and yeah. we don't necessarily at the moment know where we're going because we're learning all the time. And that's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. So um, from your perspective at the moment then, if we start off really the, the, the first series this today of, when you look at healthcare or health around you, either the general public or also with clients that you deal with. What do you see? What, the modern day healthcare or health? It seems there's a lot of confusion. First off, people look at health as they see someone with abs and muscles and they think that's instantly healthy. Yeah. Or they look at, see what the media here in the UK perceive as health and you see different newspaper articles one week to the next week that are contradicting each other. You see different specials on TV, which again, contradict each other. Yeah. And health in general seems just to be overwhelming because there's such a bunch of information which is thrown on you. Yeah. And suddenly you think you're doing well. And then you think, because you see something else, oh my God, why did I even try that for? Well, and also you, both of us have an interest in sports and, and performance. And um, there's that perception of that, that endurance athlete or that high-performing athlete is the epitome of health. And very often they're not. No. Their diet is rubbish, but they're good at getting the body to get a job done, but they're not necessarily health, healthy. When I was back in South Africa and I was still in college, um, one of the top runners who I ended up adjusting, I mean, he was pounding out miles after miles, but he was smoking 30 or 40 a day. But because his, it wasn't affecting his health per se, expression of health at the time, it was quite a, quite an interesting one saying, well, here's someone who's performing at a high level, is the epitome of health, but he's also you know, taking part of very unhealthy um, habits. So it's quite, yeah. it, it is, I agree, it's really confusing for the per, average person out there is, what is health and how do I achieve that? Yeah, and I think using the athletes as a the background there, when I work with a guy in the Tour de France and we see physically what they're burning and it's six seven eight thousand calories yeah. a day and then it's saying what can the body actually effectively burn during the day are they using the nutrients as much as possible and using the tour de france as an example three week endurance event if you look at testosterone levels at the start and at the end yeah they dip during that time but they but their focus is not necessarily, I want to maintain health or so be the piece of health. A to B as quick as possible. Top performance, yeah. recovery, go the next day. But people see that in the media. Yeah. And they they get Chris Froome health. is going low carb, Chris Froome is going keto, and essentially yeah. they mix and match based on their activity levels as to how many carbohydrates they need. But the media will pick out Chris Froome is going yeah. low carb, so everyone wants to go low carb. So, Michael Phelps died. Yeah. When that was. Well, they read in an article, they read something and they hear, well, this is good, this is what so-and-so does, that's what I must do. Yeah. Um, and we've got it also now, you've got the ability of top amateur athletes to actually trying to perform and they're training, you know, and sometimes just as hard or just off the pros. And they are, they, they're wanting that same, but they haven't got that same so either support network or down the line they're facing a, a big health issue as a mm -hmm. consequence. They, they're plowing in a lot of... Um, stress in the body, it's producing a lot of free radicals, they're not absorbing that and they're not counteracting them down the line, they're breaking down um, because of an unhealthy approach. So I think there's a lot of confusion of health and, and the average person in the street is being swayed by either trends or hearsay or articles. I was seen on Facebook the other day, there was you know talk of um, you know multivitamin, this vitamin or they take magnesium, it's good for this condition. And there's a confusion about people are looking at what is, what do I take for specific condition versus what do I take to give the body what it needs to be healthy. 
Yeah. There's a lot of confusion. So then it results in the confusion with the diet of low carb, high carb, should I eat this? Um, you know, Atkins, do I take fats out of the diet? Do I add fats in? And there's a lot of, you know, research has always been showing the, the you know, fats have an important role. And the modern day people are confused saying, I shouldn't eat eggs, now I should eat eggs. It goes in trends. Yeah. And I think the media had a low fat phase and then everyone went to refined sugars and processed food because they were having low fats. And then suddenly it's, uh, let's go paleo, let's go low carb and let's go high fats and you don't have to count anything and all this sort of stuff. And it, does go in trends and I can see there being another trend in the future which well we're, we're heading towards meat is bad and then saturated fats and then some people will say well we need this we do need a certain amount of saturated fats it's in having too much of something yeah and every single person is an individual there was a, a tv show recently which was about vitamins and we discussed it the other day with regards to the multivitamins out there are based on the general needs of an average yeah. human being, not taking in an individual stress levels, not taking in whether they're an amateur athlete, not taking in their medical history, and all these things which could drain them or have them topped up with certain vitamins that we need to test. Yeah, I and mean, people are confused of where do I turn, yeah, and that's where I think you and I, there's a lot of overlap, our, our position ourselves of of where do people turn to get concrete sound information and guidance on these things because I'm, I'm bombarded quite a bit with recently of a lot of people saying well I've got XYZ so I'm taking this multivitamin and what I tend to say is you know why are you taking that product why and then and it's usually I read it in an article or someone suggested this or I thought this was a good idea so you get in with with vitamins you get in a lot of people using vitamins as a therapy unguided whereas uh, supplements really are there to supplement what we know we're not getting from a sound diet so the diet the message really for me is that the diet is the platform is the foundation and then should you know that either for your specific needs you need to look at certain uh, requirements that you're not getting from your diet then supplementation makes sense but I think there's a lot of people out there who are buying products which are they're having to keep them safe. So you've got a product which has got low doses, so they know that the general population can take this to remain safe, but the general population might not get in, be getting the, the, the benefits that they think because they're chasing either one product. So you know, zinc is the next thing, or um, like turmeric at the moment is really, really um, hot property. So I was in um, one of the well-known uh, you know, health food chains and they've got a whole rack there of all the, the latest turmeric and curcumin supplements. And I said, well, you know, six, eight months ago, that wasn't there. So there's an emphasis, and I've had patients going, oh, I think, um, you know, I'm worried about I've got some, some inflammation or so, so I'm taking turmeric. And it's like, well, interesting why you're doing that, but there's so many other things that you can do, or ideally ask why. Why are you having that inflammation in the first place? You know, um, how's your sleep? How's your diet? How's your exercise? How you managing your lifestyle rather than looking so they almost looking at that supplement is the same as taking a drug i'm looking for that one thing to solve this health issue rather than asking why why would your body be giving you that symptom in the first place and then we were talking the other day about lifestyle you know people are people are need to ideally connect back to what the body is designed for what am i asking it to do and therefore how can i support that and i think when you get those basic foundations right is a lot of the a lot of those additional things you don't have to be trying to chase that one thing you know i need i'm not sleeping well so i hear that this herb or this thing is good for sleep rather than starting off with the question of why why would you not be sleeping well, when, when you look at building a diet it's the same as building a house we need solid foundations and that is your diet yeah that is essentially what we need there the foundations of your health going to be linked with your diet and stress management now if we don't get those foundations there what a lot of people are doing essentially building a house uh, which is supplements and they've not put the foundations down they've just put the bricks on the mortar and they've done some nice decorations but it's only a matter of time a matter of time before mother nature comes blows the house down yeah and, the a, and, and a lot of uh, supplements are not presenting they're chemically 
right, but they're not presenting that chemical in the right sense of how the body utilizes it. Yeah. So it's that always, always kind of there's a very good reason why you take some supplements and the color of your urine some changes. Some fat soluble, some water soluble, yeah. So it, it's that multivitamin is not going to provide the same foundation as a as a solid solid diet. And also as well, if someone has some deep rooted issues and you take a multivitamin which is high in certain things and for example very high in anxiety and they have something which is high in copper potentially there's a link to that or some very deep issues that are going on with calcium and then they end up taking the calcium high in their body which is stopping the zinc absorption and then just chucking more zinc at it yeah. they can have an over overload of zinc which it's not an issue of not having enough zinc it's just the calcium is stopping it working yeah and some things work side by side I, I was in a really uh, interesting uh, talk lecture on uh, last weekend, or last Friday, was on genetics yep. and how the, the research now was genetics and looking at different variations of your gene and how your gene expresses. You and I could have a slightly different gene variant, so we process something like vitamin C or folate or uh, vitamin B12 or we break down waste products quicker or slower which sometimes can be a good thing and a bad thing. And so our supplement or our energy needs are different. So when you have someone who just takes a general vitamin B supplement, its requirements or its dosage may not be the right for you or me, or I don't need some of it, and so it backs up, or I'm literally just flushing it down the toilet. So the vitamin supplement thing is something I've got more and more interested in because it's got to be more and more specific to as I said, supplementing, what, that's what our training was, supplement is to supplement what you know that you're not getting from your diet. So ideally, improve the diet. And then, I think a lot of people are trying to take either a supplement as a backup or insurance policy. Because there's this whole debate, isn't there, of well, modern day farming methods and Swallow food production or so. I'm not sure that that's giving me much. So I take a multivitamin in case. And there's, there's a lot of practitioners out there who support well, it. With and I can see why they do that, because... It is insurance policy, but is this product a better insurance policy to that one? And, and how much are you prepared to throw? Because not all not all multivitamins are, are produced or supplying the same. Yeah, but we talk about the farming methods. There's everyone getting their back up about the fact that here in the UK we're importing foods. Yeah. Now we don't have the climate all year round to have certain foods. However, as society, where well, years ago, I mean even. 20 years ago, I can remember when we didn't have certain foods at certain times yeah. of the year, and now that if you want strawberries all year, you eat a strawberry all year. It's not the yeah. same product all year. Yeah, but it comes from different places because we still want strawberries all year. Yeah, and to get the most nutrients that we can into that food, you're not going to be able to farm from the UK all the time. Yeah, and people hate the fact that you look at your food and it's come from Morocco, it's come from Spain, it's come from wherever it's come from, but if people still want that, they need to realise that you can't have it from the UK all the time. Well, no. strawberries associate, associate strawberries with Wimbledon. Yeah. And when you eat strawberries around Wimbledon, it's a totally different taste, flavour, you know, juiciness than, yeah. than something which, you know, February. And there may be methods that are artificial as such to allow strawberries to be produced here in the UK, yeah. which are potentially expensive, which are going to push the price of strawberries up, but also how effective is that getting the nutrients into those strawberries as they grow? Well, that's what, that's what interests me with the functional medicine movement because the functional medicine is saying, um, let's measure these things. So let's get a better understanding of you, your health, and what your body systems are telling us so that we can be more specific. So mm -hmm. do we need to improve the gut bacteria? Or you know, generally taking probiotics is a good idea, but do we need to do that or not? And that's where the, the functional testing is really good. Um, a bit like with the vitamin D, you know, our, our interest in vitamin D is basically because we know from now through the winter, people aren't going to produce vitamin D. So a lot of people say, well, I'll, I'll take some vitamin D. But the question then is what dose? And so we know that a safe well. range for most people, so we've got to stay in that safe range. But do we need to elevate someone's vitamin D? Do we need to maintain it? Or actually, do we need to watch out for toxicity? Which is very rare, but it's still a reality. And you only know a way is measuring your vitamin D levels. 
But so most people kind of go, well, yes, I'm interested, and then we can work out the dosage of vitamin D over the next three months. And when we've retested it, we can kind of almost predict what we can get it up to, to, to an optimum level. Well, most people say, well, I take a multivitamin and it's got some vitamin D in. But again, it's the level is so low because it needs to be safe for the general population. You don't know who's getting your hand of it. And so, they, so they may not be method. doing it. So testing methods that you can get potentially on the NHS. And a doc firewood is one of the big ones here. Yeah. And there's a borderline high and there's a borderline low. And there's these two markets. Ideally, we want it to be in the middle somewhere. But if you're one over low, or what would be classed as low, you're still going to be classed as okay in yeah. NHS. Now, if you're one under what would be classed as high, you're yeah. still going to be classed as okay. So there's this big range here based on the average person, and it's that's the idea of having a track record so you yeah. can see if it's fluctuating. And same with testosterone levels. Testosterone levels, even 10, 15, 20 years ago, of our parents, their parents, the testosterone would have been higher because in the society we live in, it's seen the average testosterone levels have gone down. I don't know the exact percentage, yeah. but they've gone down. Now, we live in a stressful society. Over 30, as soon as you hit 30, the average person loses about a percentage of their testosterone per year for every year afterwards. Now, if someone sleeps for six hours or less for two weeks, their testosterone levels can go down 10 to 15%. Yeah. And people say, I get four hours, five hours sleep. And you think all these things that are adding up, which are causing well, the issue. Testosterone is an interesting one also because testosterone is produced from cholesterol. Mm -hmm. So and cholesterol is associated with cortisol and stress. And if your body's stress levels shift, it produces away from testosterone and goes more into estrogen. But then we need cholesterol, dietary cholesterol, which people but if then get to that higher, then you go on a statin yep. to deplete it, but you're not addressing the stress level, so the stress is going to hit you somewhere else. So yes, you know, testosterone levels may come down, so therefore other factors come in, and you can see the snowball. It's the stress. So stress is a big one. It's probably you know, I think at some stage we'll issues. probably do more of a more of a, a focus on stress and stress management because yeah. that's going to that is a big thing because there's such a ripple effect on things that the lectures on the weekend show the biomechanical you know pathways through to how certain genes can be you know performing below par but then added stress I and mean, then caffeine alcohol all these blockers result in low levels of testosterone, low levels of dopamine, serotonin, and you can see the potential of why a lot of modern day health issues are coming in the 40, 50 years old because the pressures of either work, family, sneak up demands. And so they show symptoms coming out of the body just saying, I'm battling with the modern day stress. And so we plaster it over with different, you know, even therapies of, of uh, you know, supplement therapies or what's the latest thing I can take to help me with my sleep rather than saying what what's the cause. We have a lot of uh, intravenous therapies now as well, which is big in London, it's big in LA yeah, yeah. when I've been over there, where people will go out, get wasted, and then the next morning they'll wake up, they'll have an intravenous therapy. Sh shot. Yeah, and yeah. they'll have that. And I think it was actually yesterday, I, I believe Sami Nasri, got banned for using intravenous, you don't know exactly what it was, but he had this therapy and that was actually banned because of performance enhancer. Now, what else is that doing to live that and keep topping up with artificial? Yeah. Well, it's just a band-aid, isn't it? It's a yeah. band-aid to say, my body's giving me feedback that is functioning below optimal or below what I want, so what can I do to give it a boost to get what I want? It's a bit like the going back to the the, the cycling analogy. My focus is just over the next month, or I've got this meeting, or I've got that performance, or I've got I've got exams. I need to just get through. But long term, they're repeated. You know, in wellness paradigms, we we talk along the lines of that we are animals in captivity. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to force ourselves to perform and function in a totally different environment. Like this time of year, winter, the rest of the rest of the um, you know, so the animal species is going into hibernation or shutting down, but we're still trying to do the same routine Monday to Friday in December than we do in January. I mean, in in July, August.
and which is quite like an hour to get along there. Yeah. So you know the change of light and everything affects us. So so there, this leads to all that confusion of what we're doing. There's so how so do you work with a client then when they come to you and they go, I've come to you because I've got X Y Z. The first thing is finding out what their what their hustle is. I'm going to say because yeah. of how stressed people are. What is causing them to have this hustle mentality? Well, go, go, go. So, what's the usual thing that someone comes with you, a client generally would come to you for? They want to get fitter, they want to become leaner, they want to lose weight, or they is it more that they are knackered? Or, or what, what? It's more now, it's getting more to the point where they're tired. They wake up tired, they go to sleep, and they're wired. Um, they, they need to, they know that they've put on a, a few pounds and they want to be dropping the weight. But essentially, there's other things now which people come to me. They're losing focus. Yeah. They're low on energy throughout the day. Whereas before, it was specifically for sports performance. Working with the business guys now, people that are entrepreneurs, people that are over 30, specifically over 30, working ridiculous hours, they've got a family, and they get to the end of the week, and they get to the weekend, and they're just so tired, they can't even play with their kids. Yeah. And it's getting to like, the real life situation yeah, I mean I fit into your demographic because it's a case of you know you've got now your career going you've got the, the kids you've got the, the business you've got everything but you are now juggling so many things and then oh by the way I need to also look after myself and uh, and you've got to find energy and focus for all those things yeah so the modern day life is is tough and then on the other hand you've also got you know the, the housewife or, or stay-at-home husband who's Juggling all the kids kind of thing. Yep. So it's not only the businessman or the worker. There's, there's, there's so juggling so things, much. But a lot of the times, and Tony Robbins said it, that when I tried to lose weight and get in shape, it was hard. And it didn't give me any productivity in my business. But when I looked at increasing my energy, I lost weight. I got in better shape. And I got so much more out of my business that I was able yeah. to work less. So what's the, key with, what's the key of increasing your energy? A lot of times it's, it's going to be diet and stress management. What stresses sleep. that diet? Sleep, sleep, yeah. Uh, getting the sleep in. What stresses that is your current diet putting on your body? Because it's going to be putting a lot of stress on your body if it's not the right stuff. Now, is it as simple as taking gluten out and dairy out? No. Now, do people react to that? Yes. Do as many people as we think react to that? Not as much as you think. And it's again, it's the same mindset, isn't it? What one thing can I do? So I'm going to try gluten free, or I'm going to try low carb, or I'm going to try this. It's not seeing that whole picture of you know exercise, the appropriate type of exercise. Because some, some also go, oh, I hear that you know high intensity is good, but they're already knackered. All their energy levels and reserves are knackered. Some people and then they go and blast it, and they go, I feel even worse, or they get ill because yes. the body just goes, whoa, what are you doing? This is another stress. This time of year, people get ill. One, the vitamin D, yeah. but. Working with a lot this, is of the tu- this is the toughest time on the body, going from yeah. autumn into winter. The, the, the body's year we've had, it's, well, around the world, the, the climate has been different around the world this yeah. year. I've noticed more people have seasonal affection disorder now than I've seen in the history of the 10 years I've been in this industry. Mm. Okay, the first three or four years, I may not have understood what it was, but as soon as I found out what it was, now I notice because we had such a hot summer and the temperature hasn't really gone up and down low, it's slowly going down, but it's still pretty warm for a November. We're actually suffering psychologically because of it. And a lot of people get ill this time of the year. I work with a lot of Americans and they're coming up to their Thanksgiving, their holiday season is starting after Halloween. People start taking vacations and holidays, whatever we want to call it, wherever we are in the world. But as soon as we stop, the body sometimes, nine times out of ten, decides to say, oh, I don't have to hold up right now. I think I'm thanks to now, I can, now yeah. I can process How many people have colds over Christmas? Yeah. It's, the, it's the one who goes away, they work, 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 then they go, oh, summer holiday, they've got two weeks off, go away, the first week they ill. Yeah. And the body says, right, thanks for now the opportunity. And that's because adrenaline drops. You, you pump, yeah. go, 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 adrenaline drops, and the body goes, great, now I can process what I need to do, now giving me the opportunity. Your body's a brainy thing, and we have it on that sprint mode for so long. Yeah. Now, who's gonna win in a race between Mo Farah and Usain Bolt in a marathon? Usain's gonna be faster for the first 100 meters, and then he's gonna burn out. Well, after about 400 meters, probably. Uh, and the person that goes slower, but steadier, is gonna get further. Yeah. It's the well, growing up in South Africa, the idea of, 
facade was non-existent. Never really even had that con the concept until coming over to this country. And then was there a change of climate? Uh, like sorry, that's a winter. Well, where I grew up, it was a very small difference. There's a difference in temperature, but not a difference really or hugely in, in light quality. And I, I tend to look at it really from a quality of light. If you go back to South Africa this time of year, you go straight really into early summer, and you get the blue, the greens, the quality light, your brain kind of fizzes, it's alive. When you come back here, if you ever anyone goes away in the middle of winter for winter sun, when you come back, you see the UK for what it really is, of how, how dull it is. Yeah. Because you come in directly, modern day travel, flip side right into winter. And it's it's great, the quality of light, and you feel that you're in the in late evening getting ready for bed all day. And then after three or four days you're acclimatized. So it's not jet lag, especially from South Africa, but it's the lack of light and the light stimulating the pineal gland, stimulating the brain. Um, so that's how I see a lot of, of SADS. And it, people go to, uh, go to work earlier and leave later. So they're going to work in the dark and leaving in yeah. the dark. So, and then it's artificial light through the day. Yeah. So do you impress more people of, of that element of, of it's a holistic approach? It's, so in chiropractic wellness, we will talk along um, you know the, the nervous system and how the nervous system run, r body is what we work with and, but it's no use in clearing those channels and getting adjusted and then going and not understanding what the stresses are so we talk along physical emotional and chemical stresses mm -hmm. and looking at all those and trying to get away from people thinking about what's the one thing I'm doing wrong or what's the because it's very seldom is, is and one thing is the way I help people manage stress as well yeah because in the psychological aspect of it the mindset of it I go deep into the mindset of things. It's not you just spoken a lot about yeah. accountability. It's, it's, it's accountability, it's mindset. It's not simply here's a meal plan, follow it, because some people don't want to follow the meal yeah, plan. Yeah. My job as a coach, as a health optimization coach, is to educate people. Some people that have worked for two, three years, and there's been reasons because they just like that accountability. And my job is six, eight months, that person can be like, yeah, cool, Ollie, you know what? I'm ready to go alone now. Like the lion leaving. Hang on, is it the herd? Pride, lion, pride, pride. pride. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Like the lion leaving there, and it's the young Simba growing up. Yeah, and essentially is. But then you're still a resource, and still people can say, "I need some clarification." Yeah, I'm still there. Yeah. Yeah. Still the there with them. But the uh, the actual one thing, we can only ever do one thing at a time, yeah. and a lot of times we're stressed because we've got people's bosses just pushing them to do different things. Then they've got an email going off, they've got Facebook going off, they've got someone else here saying this and someone saying that, but we can only ever do one thing. Yeah. Now, we'll have that at home, where we'll be watching TV, we'll be having WhatsApp, or scrolling through it's so Facebook, easy. and it's just easy to get caught up in different screens. Now, if we can focus on one thing and actually learn to zone into that one thing, then we can get more done. Yeah. And that goes the same with if I'm writing an email, or I'm writing an article, or recording a podcast, or whatever it is, that it's going to be a case of, well, if I can focus on specifically that, great, that's perfect. I know we're both getting put off by the beep here, but it's going to be a case of, well, we need to focus as much as possible, yeah. and there are going to be distractions. But it's essentially learning to be able to zone in. And realize you can only do one thing at a time if you want to do something and also, to your best. So on a, and also on a health, general health thing, there's so many systems out there which are working against us. Mm -hmm. You know, from as you say, from a focus and a, a mindset perspective and a stress level, social media, emails. You know, we can we can respond to work emails at any time of the day now. So that there's a, a really a, a there's no real distinction between different parts of our lives. It's all a blur. And then, you know, there's powers that be out there who want to entice us to make different food choices, uh, which aren't necessarily in our, in our best health interests, you know, marketing and food. And, marketing is powerful. And then you've got, you know, the, the chemical aspects of exposure to different chemicals. So it's, it's really, as you said, going back to the whole thing, it's really confusing. It's very confusing. And also the human brain wants to pull you towards the easiest, the, the path of least resistance. Well, the, and the human brain is still very much in its basic form. It's, yeah. it's reproduce, it's survival, it's food, and, and many people tend to think, oh, hunter-gatherer, they were fit, they were athletic. But if you look at hunter-gatherer, um, 
if they had plenty of thought, they didn't sit there and go, you know what, I'm, I'm feeling a bit tired, you know, we haven't been doing much this morning, I'm going to go for a run. They didn't do that. If they had plenty of thought, they, they lay in the land, lounge around. They're like a private line where the belly's full and everything's there. Save, save, save your energy because survival may need that I need to conserve my energy. So we are, as I said, it's, we're, we're animals in captivity. We are overstimulated, we're undernourished, and we're overstressed. And then we're trying to do all those main functions. It's awareness is the big thing. Yeah. Awareness and also perspective. Now, there's a guy, Gary Vaynerchuk, that I follow massive in the entrepreneurial world. He's a big entrepreneur in New York. And he said that once you put things into perspective, then when you're moaning about how bad your day is, yeah. There are seven billion people on earth. And if you put them from one to seven billion, for starters, his stuff's on podcasts, his stuff is on YouTube, his stuff is on the internet. You're gonna be watching it with an iPhone, you're gonna be watching it with an Android, a Samsung, or whatever it is. And if you're between one and, uh, if you're seven billion in the world, you've got a bit of a problem. Yeah. But you're not gonna be anywhere near that. You're gonna be in the upper half if you're watching this. Well, they say these days there's more mobile phones around than there are people. Exactly. On the, on the you look in perspective that you're a human being as well. You could have been a fly. You could have been a gnat. That the, you, you've already won the lottery. When we look at perspective with that, the amount of power that human beings, this has gone completely off, off the health track. But when we put things into perspective, when we're going through a low patch, first off, it's going to feel pretty rubbish to be in a low patch and there's a lot of depression around. But when you look at perspective of it, and don't get me wrong, I've been, I've had anxiety attacks, as, as we know when I left. Yeah, as we, we stated the other yeah. day, neither you and I are you know, perfect and, yeah. and it would be wrong for someone to portray themselves as perfect. Yeah. And so also, look, when you're in that situation, you feel like you're seven billionth in the world. Yeah. And it's easy enough to say to someone who's very depressed, who's anxious to say, look, it could be a lot worse. Yeah. But when you get out of that and you realize, hang on, it wasn't as bad as that. When I lost my role uh, at the insurance company, it was one of the best things that happened because it made me push to follow my passion. Yeah, and it's and the old thing of, yeah, yeah. through, but through yeah. hardship comes growth and exactly. you learn a lot about you. Yeah. So um, I know because time's ticking on, yep. and we've covered a lot of different aspects of general health without necessarily specifics. So we want to go forwards and do different um, different debates, different workshops. Yeah, we've already got loads of notes. I don't think we've touched yeah. on the quarter. Of what so we're what at. what would be good? And and we're going to put this out certainly through YouTube and Facebook, and we're going to uh, you know for both our our um, respective uh, social media platforms. Um, one thing which we which we really encourage from from people who have an interest in what we're talking about and covering. If there's certain topics or certain areas of confusion within healthcare, which we can help you with or elaborate, um, obviously it's not the platform to, to look at in the true sense of addressing a specific health issue. But if there's confusion of, oh, I'm confused about different diets, or you know, why would low, low carb, high carb, this, that, is it a diet attitude of things, is it a supplement, is it a mind, mindfulness, What's, what can I do to manage stress? Let us know, put it into comments, put it into emails, we really want to take this platform forwards and, and uh, encourage debate, uh, encourage people to be curios curious about their health, what avenues, and we can hopefully uh, expand on some things of interest. So we're here for, for each other. We, we, we want this platform to help us and, and, uh, and, and learn and grow, but more importantly also for, for our respective uh, clients and uh, our community, um, to expand and, and ask you know better questions. So if we we're here for for you to to help and please fire away and and let's take this further. And we're going to look to try and do well every, every fortnight. But we may even add different ones in if something's more topical coming up. Um, then you know let us know and, and let's let's develop this into uh, something bigger. Definitely. All right. It's been great. Excellent. We'll see you in a couple, well, of, weeks. couple of weeks. Yeah. We'll go from there. Cool.